Hey everybody, today we have another Optima to look at. It seems that this family of chassis is very popular. I uh, only really learn about what's what after they're out. I'm not uh, really much on the new projectors. I guess I'm really more up on the you know three plus year old projectors. This particular one, which still has all the plastic on it, which is unusual. I'm gonna, I guess leave it all on there because I, you know, it's not mine to take off. Um, this is an HD 28 DSE. Um, there's the regulatory number there, VDH DNB DSE. And I believe the complaint is something to do with the color wheel. Doesn't look that dirty, you know, just giving it a, a casual glance. It was packed really well, which is good because lately I've had a few uh, poorly packed units that have made me sad. But like all of them, before we fire it up, let's open up the lamp assembly housing area the lamp basket and just give it a, a double check yeah no obvious I mean there's some dust but I'm not seeing anything crazy let's see he did have the lamp in correctly good pop that up yep looks good I think the problem was he'd watch it then the color wheel would start acting up and it would shut down. But the lamp assembly definitely looks good. I do see evidence of dust inside. Let's see if you guys can see that. It's kind of hard to see, but there's like a very thin, very thin film of dust in there. Everything else looks okay. It definitely looked like it ran hot. See the color wheel. Let me get a, a cotton swab and then push on that. Just want to make sure it spins. It's dirty. I can see that the wheel's pretty dirty, but definitely moves okay. So that's good. All right. So first things first. Let's put this back in. this back in and then we will give it a shot first just lock that yep that's good oh, you need the door out a little bit. All right, we have standby. That's good. That's bad. Unhappy color wheel. Yep. I'm sure you guys heard that. That was an unhappy color wheel. In fact, let's do another one. Let's do it. Start it up again so you can really hear it. Let's just hear that one more time. Plug it. Drain those caps. That color wheel's chirping all over the place, though. It's either the wheel's bad or maybe the wire got bent or cracked or something because it kind of sounds like not all of the uh, coils are being fired because there's three poles on that motor. Chirp, chirp, chirp. Angry squirrel inside. 
and I, that's the motor jamming that noise. All right, no worries. Get this lens cover out of the way. Dear Optima and BenQ and anybody else, please make those easier to remove. Let's get our screw bin. do have the uh, keyboard that we will need to make sure is retaped when we reconnect it because I've had problems with this clip popping loose after the fact so I'm gonna either probably put new tape on it let's yeah that tapes pretty beat up I'll put some new capped on tape on it but we'll save that there so let's see Here's our color wheel. Right there. Unhappy. Unhappy color wheel. Let's just see if there's anything that indicates the uh, root cause. It's the wheel itself. We'll see if maybe the uh, wire was damaged. Sometimes these wires can melt and burn. You can see that discoloration here. It's not too bad though. And then over here, looks like that may have been disconnected at one point. Yeah, it looks all right. Let's get the meter and let's read those coils. Let's see if it lost a, uh, if it lost a pole or two. So we should have roughly, I think, three ohms. I can't think common is the far, far right pin. Let's see. What's in two? Three. Three. three yeah so the coils are good it must just be a mechanical problem maybe the uh, index mark is coming off oh I didn't think of that let's see let's pop the uh, index mark sensor off the cover take that out oh I'll bet I know the problem I'll bet it's not even the uh, motor let's see if we have an index mark first let me get you guys a little closer so you can see better. So I, I suspect I know what the problem is if the index mark is here. But I don't see the index mark at all. So the index mark flew off. That's where it should be. Unless that's... Uh, yeah, it flew off. But the other thing I noticed... Let's see if you guys if I can get that focused for you see all that dust on the sensor so it's a little of both so I bet I can replace that because the wheel actually feels really good it spins really nice I think we can probably just replace that index mark and be good to go so let me uh, go get my tape I'll be right back and here's the tape that's the tape I like to use you can find it on eBay as transformer tape different widths. I just find this size to be pretty useful. So this will be replaced. That actually we're just going to replace all the tape I've taken off. So we're going to retape the uh, connector for the color wheel, the keyboard, and this little area here after we fix everything. So we'll get Mr. Meter out of the way. And 
let's see how to get inside this uh, HD28 BSE. So first we'll take the uh, lamp assembly out. This is a good aftermarket one. It's got the Osram 210 E20.9 in it. So like the other one, I would want to pull that out without removing the basket, but it seems like the basket just has to be loosened. So we'll take out the screw. This one, can I leave? All right, I think I can leave that one in. I'm really trying to take out as little as possible. This one right here. crazy how similar this is to the HD26 and the other units in that family. That's good. Now it's loose. You unplug the fan. I'm going to unstrap these wires. Because I don't want to unplug stuff if I don't have to. The fan I have to unplug. But the lamp wire I can just move off to the side. This whole thing just comes up. We'll just lean it over here for now. I'm just checking the lamp wire to make sure there's no uh, nicks in it or the plastic didn't, or the silicone didn't dry out and crack. Lamp fan looks okay too. These don't really use lamp fans, and we're going to give it a cleaning. You know, hit it with the vacuum and some air, but doesn't need much. So the color wheel is the next step. So that one comes out. I'm actually going to use the lens cap for a, a secondary screw bin just for the color wheel screws. I don't want to mix those up. The uh, screws for the color wheel are shorter than the screws for the lamp basket. are. Come on, focus, see? So they're, actually they might be a little wider too, I'm not sure, but they're different. Then there's the two on the top, the fine thread. There's one more. There's got to be. Oh, yeah, that black one right there. Another black one. Yeah, this black one, too. So the black ones look like they hold in the rest of that metal. Yeah. Okay, now you're supposed to be able to take this out and then tilt that to get it out, but see it hits here. Come on, focus. So it hits that nub on the top. And also was hitting some of the screws on the inside there, but it will come out. With it out, it'll just, just tip it back. Set that here. See if anything is ob anything else is obviously wrong. It doesn't look like it. It actually looks pretty good in there. That foam bit's lifting up, but that's okay. That can stay. That'll be all right. Especially after we clean everything, it'll be fine. So the color wheel is what we're going to address now. Let me get some foam to put under it. So I have a few, actually. This one's used, but works. I replaced the uh, index mark on it. 
So that one's good. And then I also have this one, which is actually new. So we might use that one. It's probably the right thing to do. And what I'll do is we'll clean up the old one and I'll save that for a, uh, a spare or if somebody needs a, uh, you know, a budget replacement, a discount replacement, then we can do that because not everybody has the money and not everybody has the need to have a, uh, you know, brand new one. We'll still clean up this one because I do want to show you that these can be salvaged when they still spin. We could hear that one spun fine. The problem with this one is the index mark is gone and the, uh, it's dirty and the sensor is dirty. So I'm going to get a piece of paper towel. Use that. Also get a cotton swab. All right. So let's get it apart first. I'm going to take it out of the holder. Sticking to the rubber. This thing got hot. This thing got really hot. So we're gonna definitely clean those. Uh, we're gonna clean those. <coughs> clean those fans up big time. There we are. So you can see that there's colors there. They're just not very vibrant. And then when we look at the new one, with all the white behind it, you can see how vibrant that is, even with it being in the bag. That's just dirt. So what I'll do, I'm going to hold it gently with a pair of needle nose, squirt a little bit of Windex on that paper towel, and then just... Center out. Ah, come on. Get it a little easier to hold. And we'll get all that dust off the front. And then we'll get all the dust off the back. And then it should be pretty good. It should look pretty good. Yeah, I'm already seeing it looking better. This is actually a lot dirtier than I thought. So put more Windex on there and and I'm going from the uh, center out. So that way it pulls the dirt off, it doesn't drag it around. like a lot of stuff caked on there. Backside looks a lot better though already. Backside looks really good. Let's see. There's like some stuff right there. I'm gonna have to get some alcohol. Alright, let's see if this makes any difference. I'm just trying to get it all, all the dirt loose. And I'm not putting any pressure on the glass, just gently. Yeah, I mean, it's better. I 
it's better this would work fine but we're going to uh, we're going to definitely replace it I'm still going to fix the index mark get that clean too that center hub So we're going to replace that index mark. You can see where the glue, the old glue was. And uh, what I find is that using tweezers and scissors and makes it a lot easier. And gloves. So what I'll do is we're going to pull off a piece longer than we need. Tape is cheap. just a little too wide and I'm sure you can come up with your own way of doing this if you need to Hold this extra bit out of the way. Oh, come on. Actually, maybe I can just cut it off. There we go. might actually be too too narrow mm, maybe not too long. There we go. Alright. There we go. That actually should be fine. It's about a millimeter too narrow, but that might be alright. Uh, but again, this is going to be a backup. I'm not even putting this one back in. I just want to show you guys how to put an in index mark on. And if I have to, I can make that a little wider. One thing I've noticed with these especially is that the index mark tends to be right at the beginning of the blue segment. I really don't think it needs to go too far past it. I think my piece here would be fine. We could probably put this back in and it would probably run fine for a very long time until the rest of the wheel went bad. But uh, we're not going to do that. We're going to put a new one in. So let's get a new one. Put this one in the bag, well in the bag the other one came out of, and HD28DSE. So now I know what it came out of, so that's good. And then I'm going to wrap that up in the uh, bubble wrap here that the other one was in and then put it in its box. I have a box where I store the similar color wheels and then I add the models. HD28 DSE. So I know the wheels that are in here will work with these models. 
now let's put the new one in. So that's the new one. Unfold the label over so that we can feed it through. See that goes in there. And I have the label folded over so that it will hopefully, yep, that'll sneak through just fine. pretty good. It's almost like I've done this before. It's weird, I've had kind of a run on these. Uh, you know, a run for me at least, like I don't do this full time or anything. This came in through my day job. So this is an actual, like, paid repair. So this one, uh, I think he's going to be about like, 100 and 75 200 and some bucks something like that i'm not positive i gotta double check but um this is not a youtube repair now now we're gonna clean this up before i put the new wheel in pan's not too bad get that um, paper towel that i was using on the that other wheel get those leading edges cleaned off I, uh, I don't know how true this is. It would be an interesting experiment. Um, but my understanding is that when the front of those fan blades get encrusted with dust like that, it messes up the uh, airfoil shape. And that makes the efficiency of the fan blades drop off pretty far. So I've found that just cleaning those leading edges, or if the fans get soft or uh, blunt leading edges, like they should always be kind of sharp. If they feel smooth and not sharp, they may have gotten too hot and kind of uh, rolled into a, you know, uh, not good position of the, you know, the, what's the word I'm looking for here? They get blunt, blunt tips. If they get blunt leading edges, that's bad. that and I do want to hit this with the vacuum in the air so I'm gonna go do that I'm gonna do that off camera because it's really loud and it's nice and clean now I'm not gonna set this back in just yet because I did I wanted to get a little bit of the uh, this stuff out that's where plastic got too hot it's actually little bits of plastic. You can see where it's all discolored down here. That's actually, uh, I, guess, I mean, it's dust, but it's not dirt dust. That wire loose. All right, so let's spin you around, and let me zoom you guys in, and we're going to put that uh, new color wheel in. So we're going to go in here. this we got this and then the new wheel sort of drops in and then we have to put in let's see a fine thread come on Then we'll have the two black screws that hold it down, and the two um, coarse screws for locking this thing into the base. So that goes there. First screw. Second screw, coarse screw, and 
other coarse screw. Blower fan looks good. I did vacuum that. Let's see if I can just give it a quick Yeah, see that didn't really come out too clean. Let me let's pop this out. Yeah, that needs some actual physical attention. See all that building up in there? I did hit this with some air and the vacuum, but it didn't really help. see if this works. I'm just hoping I can roll this around and loosen loosen that dust up enough. It's better. I see some here. And that's a big chunk too. It's weird the dust in this is kind of sticky. Like it doesn't want to come loose. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go get this with the vacuum and a brush. I'll be back. That's good. I'm not going to be eating off it, but it will move air very nicely. Let's see. Good, good, good. Again, let's tuck the wire back behind so it's not in the way, like that. Now we can put the basket back in. Now, something that I want to make clear anytime you're putting this sort of chassis back together, the basket has a pair of um, I guess you could call them ears that kind of wrap around the metal. See right here, that, here, and here. They go around there. If you don't do that, everything's offset funny. gap. Oh, sorry, there's no gap there. That's important. Then, let's get this back over here. We'll wrap that back around it, hold all the wires together, plug our fan back in. 
I'll do the color wheel wire and the door switch wire once I put those screws back in. First, let's put the come here, you. Let's put the color wheel sensor back in place. take these out. Their wire for the lamp isn't quite routed the way I want it. Oh, there it is. See, you got the wire going on either side of that. I don't want that just on one side. screws so they'll go in last let's get the uh, wheel routed the wire routed We need to put some tape across here. So let's get my tape again. My scissors. There we go.
There we go. That keeps that wire in place. I'm just going to give it a little bit of an extra pinch there just to keep it clear of that screw spot. So that's good. That's all in there. I like it. All right, the next place we need to get some tape is down here to hold the <clears throat> that latch on the color wheel connector. Hold that straight, or hold it in place, I guess. looking to do is really just get tape to keep that you know from unlatching so it's a little long but that's fine it actually kind of looks nice the way it's wrapped around there so that's good let's see that's all plugged in that's rerouted everything's happy there um yeah i think i can get my test keyboard and we can try this all right, so I have my keyboard hooked up. It looks good. Oh, I need to clip the uh, the door switch down. Where's my gator clip? So that's on, let's plug it back in. Lamp assembly is in, connectors in, everything's plugged in. And should be no tweeting noises from it. We just should get a lamp and a picture. We have lamp, I heard the color wheel. There's a picture. Like it. There we are. No source. Nope. Let's see. Uh, menu. There's our test pattern. Oops. There's the test pattern. I'm going to leave this up for a few minutes as long as it keeps running happily here. Then I'm going to shut it down, close it back up, and then we'll uh, take it over to the other spot for final testing. Looks good. There's my thumb. Looks very good. I'm uh, happy with this. Now I'm going to shut it down. And I'm going to uh, probably go inside and give the uh, DMD a little wipe. Because we can get in through that cover on the front there. There was so much dust in this, I'm pretty sure I even saw a few little bubble artifacts on the screen. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to move the... Uh, the real sensor out of the way and then this this panel here right. so right here this comes out that screw right there. It's kind of hard to show the camera. Let's see. Yeah. See all sorts of dust in there. Let's see if I can get 
get a better view for you guys. You can kind of see the DMD there. There's a... This is a... Um, like a shadow mask kind of thing on top. So I need to get in behind it. Here's a little better view. see the DMD reflecting in there. So I got that pretty clean. Very clean, rather. Now this can go back on. That goes there. And then the metal cover. Come on. There we go. And then That's nice and clean now. No more little spots. We had a spot here and then a few spots right there. So that's all gone. I just, you know, inside that little spot where I cleaned took care of that. So we'll turn it off. And then I'm going to put the cover back on and we'll test it over on the other side. Alright, we have our focus ring back on. Let's actually, let's uh, wipe all that off. There's just so much dust inside this. And we have the top. So that's in, but it pops off really easily. So again, like I said, we're going to uh, put some tape on it. So again, the goal is to get it just so that connector doesn't open on its own. Let's get that. Come on. There we are. Perfect. That'll hold it all together. I like it. Zoom it goes in the middle.
last but not least. take this plastic off but it's not mine so I can't so we're just gonna have to cringe at it being there so let's fire it up one more time here and then uh, I'll cut over with the magic of video to this testing Uh, bring it over for testing and here we go it is in my test area with the plastic still on it I have resisted all temptation to peel it off and I'm trying to fire up uh, YouTube on this Raspberry Pi there we go web store what's it saying there chromium didn't something or other. Eh, we'll see if it comes back up. There we are, youtube.com. But you get the idea. Um, I'm going to let it run here for about an hour, make sure everything's okay. As long as I get uh, an hour's run time out of this, we'll be good. Uh, I don't expect to have any problems. It's a new color wheel, you know. Oh, and don't worry about that scrolling that you're seeing. That's the sync rate of the camera and color wheel speed and all that stuff. If you have any questions about your HD 28 SE uh, or HD 28 DSE, there we are. Yeah, if you have any questions about your HD 28 DSE or any Optima BenQ fill in manufacturer's name here, go ahead and uh, stick it in the comments. Uh, if you have a need for a replacement lamp for one of these, also go down in the description there. I actually have a coupon code that uh, I was given so that people who see these videos and need a lamp assembly can save a couple bucks. So, uh, yeah, check the description for that and put your questions in the comment area. If you don't subscribe, think about subscribing. Um, I'm surprised that I have as many subscribers as I do. I didn't really expect my content to be that interesting for people, but it's really exciting and makes me smile a lot to know that people enjoy my videos. So, of course, the most important thing to me, thank you for watching.